जय जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य गौर चंद्र जया दैत चंद्र जया जय निनंद जय जय गदाधर जय श्रीनिवास जय मुकुंद वासुदेव जय हरिदास Hare Krishna Maharaj Hare Krishna Anuradha Mayadev Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Maharaj A glorious to Shila Prabhupada thank you so much for joining us on the GBC SPT channel for our five amazing weeks of uh, appreciating the Chaitanya Charitamrita as we appro um, approach the wonderful most blessed celebration of Gaur Purnima on the 125th birth anniversary of Shila Prabhupada so the GBC SPT has been working really hard to bring beautiful amazing material to the devotee family and uh, we're just in the last week we've had uh, incredible speakers just this morning we had his holiness sachinanda maharaj and um we have many more speakers lined up so if you haven't um subscribed to our mailing list it is gbcsbt.com and also on this facebook channel you can press your notifications to never miss a live video from us So without much ado I'm just going to go ahead and introduce um his holiness Chandramouli Swami. So Chandramouli Maharaj was actually um born in New Jersey which is just not too far away from us here in New Vrindavan and he moved um to New Vrindavan when he was about 24 years old and began pr practicing Krishna consciousness first in New York and then uh, began serving here in New Vrindavan where he received initiation from um Srila Prabhupada <clears throat> he also was uh preaching in the the nearby area Cincinnati and Columbus and then became um actively involved with the Iskon prison ministry and began visiting prisoners and holding programs in jails along with regularly regularly writing letters to inmates and sending them Shri Prabhupada's books so Maharaj is now the leader of the Iskon prison ministry and has worked really tirelessly to document the spiritual progression of the worldwide inmate community and um he has a wonderful book called holy jail which is a touching compilation of the activities of the iskon prison ministry or the ipm so he over the last 30 years he has um really changed the lives helped change the lives of thousands and thousands of inmates and by giving them the practice of krishna consciousness and um so right now he um he is um he has relocated to um Karlovac in Croatia i hope you still are you still there maharaj <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, hi so you just the sister the sister of croatia yeah. so yes the maharaj prov uh, really provides spiritual guidance all over europe in in, in america and india and uh, is an initiating spiritual master within the movement so maharaj we're so happy to have you and um we look forward to hearing your presentation on a uh, various past times of um uh, lord chaitanya mahaprabhu thank you so much maharaj hari krishna om gyan timirandasya gyananjana salakaya jaksu unmilitam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha nama om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Asyatya Devi Sitarine Vancha Kalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Evacha Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. Thank you for the opportunity to speak a little bit about the glories and pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu It is mentioned in the Shrimad Bhagavatam that uh, that uh, the sky is unlimited and there are many birds in the sky and maybe the birds have different wing power and so according to the particular bird and the wing power that that bird has he can fly so high in the sky but he can never touch the unlimited sky 
So in the same way as when we try to make our bird-like attempt to glorify the Supreme Personality of Godhead, we always fall short of the actual glories of the Lord because they are unlimited. But somehow or other, if we can touch a little bit and inspire devotees to become more and more attracted, attached, and devoted to Lord Chaitanya, and especially his mission, and that is our success. Now, there's one very uh, outstanding verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the 11th canto. Krishna, Varna, Tasa Krishna, Sangoparanga, Saparshidam, Yagyai, Sankirtanai, Prayai, Yajantihi, Sumedasaha. The translation goes, in this age of Kali, intelligent persons perform congregational chanting to worship the incarnation of Godhead, who constantly sings the glories of Krishna. Although his complexion is not, is not blackish, he is Krishna himself. He is accompanied by his associates, servants, weapons, and confidential companions. This verse really describes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance. And of course, he is called Chana Avatar in another place in Srimad Bhagavatam in the fifth canto where he is a hidden incarnation of the Lord. Although he is Krishna himself, he appears in a form or in a color that is contrary, not contrary, but external. He appears in a golden form. So he is blackish inside and golden outside. And so he is known as Goranga or the beautiful uh, limbed golden personality of Godhead. And um, Krishna Varnam means that he focuses his attention on Krishna by speaking about Krishna, but especially spreading the glories of Krishna in the form of Krishna's name, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which we know in a broader sense as the Harinam Sankirtan movement inaugurated by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is actually coming from the spiritual world. Goloka, Premadana, Harinam, Sankirtan. So Lord Chaitanya has come and he enunciates the uh, activities of the Harinam Sankirtan. So most of us who are listening today, we have a, an an understanding of Lord Chaitanya. We've been exposed to Lord Chaitanya. Our whole movement centers around his teachings and the process of bhakti that he gave us. And Lord Chaitanya performed many wonderful activities in order to illustrate particular pastimes in such a way as to send a message. His pastimes are full of important spiritual, practical, moral principles that we can learn from along with uh, uh, taking pleasure in his activities. Lord Chaitanya traveled all over India. He left Jagannath Puri and traveled down the eastern side of India, all the way down to Cape Comoran, back up and then across and back to uh, Jagannath Puri. And he did that in six years. In his travels, he met many persons and performed many activities, mostly spreading chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. One time he came to one village where there was one personality who is described in Chaitanya Charitamrita as the Korma Brahmana. His name was Korma, and he was a Brahmana. He lived in a village, I believe, near Korma Shetra, but it's not mentioned directly. And uh, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to that area, um, he recognized the Lord as being uh, a great personality. And so he took the opportunity to invite Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to his home. 
Um, the Lord accepted his invitation, understanding that here was a paka, first-class brahmana. He lived in devotion. He practiced along with his family members. So the Lord was happy to spend three or four days in the house of the Korma Brahmana. And during that time, they offered so much nice foodstuffs to the Lord, which satisfied the Lord tremendously and gave, and the Lord was very pleased by their service, their attitude, and especially their humility. They found great happiness in serving the Lord and taking care of all of his personal needs and especially getting the remnants of his prasadam. The Korma Brahman was very much attracted and devoted to the Lord. And his mind was a little disturbed that knowing that the Lord was going to leave very soon. In fact, it was the next day that he expressed his feelings. And he said, uh, my dear Lord, you know, how is it possible for me to live without you? Therefore, I don't see any future other than me joining you. So please let me travel with you. Let me become your servant. He, in so many ways, he petitioned the Lord to leave his home, leave his family, and to accompany the Lord. This was due to his attraction and his natural attraction for the Lord. The Lord said, uh, don't ever speak like that again. But he was shocked. He said, my home, my family, my wealth, everything, it belongs to you. I belong to you. The Lord said, actually, you have a family. You have responsibilities. There's no need to leave that. You can practice bhakti, Krishna consciousness, devotional service to me, simply by staying where you are and engaging your family and yourself in glorification of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. Therefore, he gave him instructions. Whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna. Whoever you meet, inspire them or instruct them in the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. The Lord spoke, he said, by my command, be guru, save the land. And in this way, if you do that, you will never lose my association. So what he was saying is that this is how we get the association of the Lord, or actually attained association of the Lord, by following his instructions <clears throat> to engage in devotional service and glorify the Lord, and also preach the glories of the Lord. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, program for preaching Krishna consciousness worldwide was essentially three, which is mentioned in one bhajan by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, and that is Namruchi, chanting the holy names of the Lord, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and developing a taste for that chanting. To chant in such a way that we increase the eagerness to chant based on uh, offering our devotion, our attention, our love to Krishna in the form of his holy name. And that will inspire us to want to do the, the next thing, which is to uh, jiva doya. That means giving compassion to those who are fallen. In other words, we call it preaching, but actually it means showing compassion to the unfortunate, those who haven't had the opportunity or may never get the opportunity to come in contact with this unless some mercy is given to them special. And in this case, preaching Krishna consciousness. And that was the second point of Lord Chaitanya's mission as to chant the holy names of the Lord and be an instrument for his mercy to spread the holy name. And the last thing he said was Vaishnav Seva, uh, to uh, 
associate with and to serve Vaishnavas in the mood of pleasing the Vaishnavas. So these three points were Lord Chaitanya's principles that he emphasized and practiced in his own way to uh, preach or to show his uh, mission. This was his mission for the world in general. And uh, on one word on Vaishnav Seva, it says that if we compare uh, persons who are expert in this quality of Vaishnav Seva, we find that Lord Chaitanya was so expert in serving his devotees that when the devotees would hear, we heard about the Mahaprakash Lila, how the Lord showed compassion to his devotees in so many ways that he appeared to him at different times descending from Vaikuntha just to protect them or just to inspire them in devotional service. How when Gangadas Bhattacharya, his uh, teacher in Navadvip, <clears throat> he was at home with his family and there was attack from the Muslim soldiers in the area and people were uh, and anxiety and afraid of being accosted by these soldiers. So he fled along with his family to escape. And this was during the nighttime. So he came down to the banks of the, the Ganges and he was looking for a boat, but there was no boats in sight. And now he started to pray to the Lord, please, save my save me save my family from disgrace these soldiers may come at any time so lord chaitanya at the mahaprakash leela was speaking to gangadas and he said when you were praying like that i heard your prayers and i descended from vaikuntha and i came as that boatman and when i came you saw me and you were so happy and you said Oh, Mr. Boatman, please take me and my family across. I will pay you so many rupees. And you were so happy. And I took you across to safety. So this particular pastime illustrates how dear the devotees are to Lord Chaitanya, that as the Supreme Personality of God, he, he personally comes to assist them in different ways in, in protecting them and inspiring them and associating with them he was he emphasized the importance of Vaishnav Seva and of course Harinam Sankirtan and compassion to the fallen souls so when um, Korma Brahma heard the Lord's words he could understand that Yes, the Lord is determined to leave, and he accepted that. And now, in the purport in this particular section of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is mentioned that uh, one does not have to change their situation in the world in order to practice or even to preach Krishna consciousness. Perhaps sometimes we think that if I had a better position or if I had more facilities or if whatever uh, one may see themselves apparently lacking in some area and thinking, well, then if I have all these things, I could be more Krishna conscious or if I have these things, I can become more of an effective preacher. But Lord Chaitanya gave a very simple but a direct and very important instruction and that is, wherever you are, whoever you are, chant the holy names of the Lord, come together with others, perform kirtan, and preach the glories of the Lord in the form of chanting the holy names to everyone accordingly and according to your particular situation. During that same time, in that particular pastime, there was another interesting event that happened. Uh, one 
one devotee of the Lord. His name was Vasudeva. And he was, uh, we might say, the material respect for Sana Nandrata. He uh, was, his entire body was racked with leprosy. And therefore, he wasn't able to associate with others. It describes in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that his body was so full of this disease of leprosy that there were worms living in his body in different places. Obviously, no one would come near him. But Vasudev was a devotee. And by nature, he was very humble. And it's described that sometimes one of the worms in his body would fall out onto the ground. Vasudev, in his natural humility, thinking that the Lord has arranged my body to be the home of these worms, therefore he would pick up that worm and put it back in. Now, this may be, one might think, how is that possible? Or how is that even sensible? But this was his natural humility. He always saw every living entity as being very dear to the Lord, no matter who they were. So he had heard, somehow he heard, that the Lord was passing through the area where he was. So he wanted to see the Lord. He heard Lord Chaitanya was coming. He knew he couldn't associate, but he just wanted to get a, a glimpse of the Lord. And so he heard that the Lord was at the house of the Korma Brahman. So he went there. But when he was informed by the Korma Brahman that Lord Chaitanya had already left, Vasudeva, feeling himself even more wretched, more unhappy, feeling himself so unworthy, he simply fell unconscious and was, was lamenting his misfortune. Of course, the Lord Chaitanya is the indwelling super soul in the hearts of all living entities. So he knows the hearts of all living entities. And so he understood Vasudev's lamentation. So the Lord turned around and came back. And he came right to the spot where Vasudev was. He picked up Vasudev and embraced him. When he did this, of course, upon being touched by the Lord, Vasudev came back to consciousness. Then he was realizing he was being embraced by that same personality, he was lamenting that he had not gotten a chance to, to have darshan. And as soon as the Lord's body touched Vasudeva's body, his entire body became well. All his leprosy was gone, and he attained a very attractive physical form. Of course, Vasudeva while this was happening, he was feeling so embarrassed, you might even say, and unhappy. And then after that happened, he turned to the Lord and said, my dear Lord, you know, people don't even come near me because my body has such a bad odor, but you have come and you've actually touched my body. So I can't I'm not understand what good fortune I have received. And then he just started to glorify his good fortune somehow. And, but then there was a certain, at one point, there was a certain element of unhappiness that entered into Vasudev's mind. And the Lord inquired about that. And he said, my dear Lord, I do feel one discomfort, some unhappiness. Now, people will see, oh, and they will, they will learn that you showed me special mercy and now my body is healed. 
And when, I, when they hear that, they will praise me in so many ways. I am afraid of this. Because of their praising, because of, their, because of your mercy upon me, I will become proud. So he was feeling very, what we say, disturbed that now pride will enter into his life. Uh, the Lord said something, he said, just chant the holy names of the Lord. Of course, he used to do that. But the Lord said, now, if you chant the holy names of the Lord incessantly, you will never be affected or disturbed by unnecessary pride. And then, of course, after showing his mercy to the Lord, to Vasudev, the Lord left. So that was an interesting point that the Lord made, which applies not just to this pastime, but to all of us. And that here is one way to free oneself from, and not one way, but the main way is that one should take shelter seriously and Srila Prabhupada he writes so, so many times he speaks it so many times he emphasizes it so many times that one should chant the holy names of the Lord 24 hours a day or in other words he says constantly he emphasizes the point of satatam kirtayam always thinking about glorifying, worshiping, serving the Supreme Lord. But particularly, he emphasizes the importance of always chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So pride will disturb one's Krishna consciousness. It will make one, uh, what we say, it will cause one to lose the mercy of the Lord because the mercy of the Lord comes and when the mercy of the Lord comes, we receive happiness. We have opportunities for more service. We might find more facilities. In other words, our Krishna consciousness is, is pushed forward by Kripa Shakti, the, the mercy of the Lord coming directly. But then again, that, that can be easily lost when one becomes what we say, overly infatuated by the mercy of the Lord and identifies it with one's own efforts <laughs> or one's own personality like that. So this, this particular pastime is very significant in helping all of us to, what we say, free, stay free from, as Lord Chaitanya said, unnecessary pride. Um, there are many, many wonderful stories of Lord Chaitanya's uh, time with us. One particular little, small little pastime that one is one of my favorites because it kind of shows the uh, fidelity of a disciple towards his spiritual master, even though he is unqualified. And that was when Lord Chaitanya was traveling to South India. He stopped at the, the Ranganath temple. At that time, there was one particular Brahmana who was illiterate, but he had received the instructions from his spiritual master every day to read Srimad Bhagavad Gita. He was told to read the Bhagavad Gita every day. Now for him, this was an impossible instruction because he was illiterate. And so he was thinking, this is the instructions of my spiritual master, but how can I do it? So he would hold the book. He would look at the pictures, sometimes not knowing, you know, the words, sometimes he would hold the book in the wrong way or upside down. And the other Brahmanas that were in the temple, sometimes they would chide him in different ways make fun of him, 
or say something, oh, Brahmana, what are you doing? You know, in other words, they, they knew he couldn't read and they were thinking he was simply making a show. But what he said to them is, this is the instruction of my spiritual master. So after a while, he stopped responding to their criticisms or to their joking, their jokes. But when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, he happened to notice this Brahmana and he came right towards him. And he saw him holding the book, looking at, and he said, Brahmana, what are you doing? Now, normally this Brahmana could understand if somebody was joking with him or just making fun of him. But in this case, he could understand this person is different. So he said, well, actually, uh, I'm reading Srimad Bhagavad Gita, but I can't read. <laughs> but still, because it's the instructions of my spiritual master, and how can I disobey his order? I'm trying to read. Lord Chaitanya listened, and then the Brahmana said, what Lord Chaitanya said to the Brahmana, well, you can't read, but how is it? I can see that you're showing emotions. You're crying. Well, he said, well, actually, when I see this particular picture here, and I see how Lord Krishna, he's sitting on the chariot of his devotee, and he has the reins, and he's driving the chariot, and his devotee is commanding him in different ways. My heart becomes overwhelmed with happiness and just I can, my heart come, becomes over, overwhelmed with appreciation and for the Lord's, how much he wants to serve his devotee. And because of that, I cannot control my tears. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu listened and he said, actually, you have understood Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> you know the purport of Bhagavad Gita that the Lord Actually, he appears not only to give his teachings, but to inspire and to serve his devotees. And that was especially true with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He emphasized so strongly Vaishnav Seva. Here's another beautiful story that we can narrate, which is, uh, which also was part of Lord Chaitanya's Mahaprakash Lila. But it's interesting to note that um, Srivas Thakur was, uh, he appeared before Lord Chaitanya. Srivas had uh, three brothers, um, Srivas Thakur, and there was Srivas, and there was, there was um, hmm. uh, I can't remember the names of the brothers, but there were three other brothers, and there was a fourth called uh, Lila Kanta. That was a fourth one had, who had died before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance. Um, Sri Vastakor really had an attraction for Srimad Bhagavatam. He loved to hear Bhagavatam, and he also loved to read Bhagavatam. So there was one particular pundit, his name was Devananda Pandit, and he was quite astute in speaking the verses in Srimad Bhagavatam. And he was known as an orator of Srimad Bhagavatam, and so he had gathered a small following in the area of Navadvip. And he would give public discourses on Srimad Bhagavatam. So one time, um, Sri Thakur decided to go and hear. Now, Devananda Pandit had the ability to speak very, very sweetly. Very, very. Uh, he had he had he had the shakti to attract my people's minds by the power of his speech. And so when he would speak, 
the words from Srimad Bhagavatam, people would listen. And sometimes they would go into, you know, great happiness listening to him. So Srivast Thakur came to one such discourse, or one narration, and he sat there and he uh, was listening. As he was listening to, to uh, Devananda Pandit narrate the beautiful stories from, from, from Srimad Bhagavatam, his heart started to melt and he was starting to feel more and more attracted in devotion to Krishna. So much so that this continued. Finally, he started to express ecstatic symptoms, which became visible to some of the people in the audience. And this caused some of the people in the audience to become disturbed by what was happening with Srivas. So a couple of those persons, doesn't mention how many or who, but they were followers of Devananda Pandit. Now Srivas was in pretty much into, into a like a type of ecstasy where he wasn't so much aware of what was happening on the external uh, realm. So they picked him up, these persons, and they carried him outside and put him on the ground and then returned inside. Devananda Pandit, he saw everything that was happening, but he did nothing to stop his followers. Or he, didn't, he went on with his narration. After some time, Srivas Thakur came to his full external state of consciousness, and he was he saw himself in his being outside. He felt very, very unhappy. And then at that time, it mentions he returned to his place. And then he was sitting, feeling very sad, lamenting. And then he started to pick up and read. Srimad Bhagavatam. And he was reading. And then it's explained, Lord Chaitanya said that actually at that time, Srivas, I came personally just to give you solace, feelings of happiness. So I entered into your heart. And as you were as you were reading Srimad Bhagavatam, you were feeling more and more happy and peaceful. And all your anxiety was gone, and your devotion to Krishna again was being experienced. So I came personally just to assist you in that. Later on, it's mentioned that Lord Chaitanya, when he saw Devananda Pandit, Devananda Pandit was walking, and Lord Chaitanya was walking, they were walking towards each other. Uh, Lord Chaitanya stopped in front of Devananda Panda, who also stopped. And he said, you don't know anything about Srimad Bhagavatam. And he started to chastise Devananda Panda. Panda didn't say anything, he just listened. And he took the criticism. So he had, he had caused the, uh, the Lord discomfort he, he no longer could get the mercy of the Lord. The Lord showed him another kind of mercy. He rejected him. But somehow or other, Devananda Pandit, now he was, he was elderly, and he was attracted to one of Lord Chaitanya's personal assistants, who was uh, Vakreshwar Pandit. Now we know Vakreshwar Pandit, he loved to dance. And in fact, Lord Chaitanya said to Vakreshwar Pandit, Vakreshwar Pandit, you are like my wing. And when you dance, if I had one more wing like you, I could fly. And one time Vakreshwar Pandit danced for 72 straight hours without breaking. So he would love to dance in ecstasy. Actually, he was an incarnation of uh, an element of the Shakti of Shirodakshai Vishnu. So he wasn't just an ordinary personality, but 
He loved to dance. So Devananda Pandit would like to watch uh, Vakweshwar Pandit dance. And sometimes he would be dancing and people would gather around and they would get closer and closer to Vakweshwar Pandit while he was dancing. And sometimes that would be difficult for him to continue dancing. But Devananda Pandit was very astute, very keen on keeping the crowds back. So using his cane, he would take his cane and just push the crowds back. So Devananda Pandit, I mean, so I'm sorry, to Vakweshwar Pandit could continue his dancing. And this pleased Vakweshwar Pandit very much because that was his bhakti. His bhakti was to dance for the Lord. Uh, there's different ways we can show our bhakti to the Lord. And, and this is one way, to dance for the pleasure of the Lord, to sing for the pleasure of the Lord, to worship the deity for the pleasure of the Lord. This is what Lord Chaitanya taught, to do everything as a service for the Lord, for the pleasure of the Lord. So this particular incident that Devananda Pandit showed towards Vakrishar Pandit again, when that got back to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was very pleased. And therefore, he again gave Devananda Pandit his uh, sweet mercy. In other words, he uh, forgave him for whatever offenses that he had committed. And, uh, and he glorified him for serving Vakreshwara Pandit uh, so nicely. So the uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur, the author of Chaitanya Bhagavad, writes, I'm standing on the ocean of the shore of devotion of the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And I'm trying to taste one drop of that unlimited sweet ocean. And then he goes on to say that even that one drop is enough to drown the entire world in happiness and ecstasy in love for Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was Krishna in, in an ecstatic form of himself. And he exhibited that so many times in serving his devotees, in taking prasadam with his devotees, and especially in performing kirtan with his devotees. I'll end with one little short pastime, which happened at the house of Sri Thakur. Uh, Lord Chaitanya, this is when he was still staying in Navadweep before he uh, took sannyas and went to Jagannath Puri. Uh, in the evening time, with a few select associates who were more elevated, they would come together at the house of Sri Thakur and the Lord would perform kirtan. Mukunda would sing, Advaita Charya so would sometimes sing, and uh, the Lord would dance. And this was not available for even the general uh, mass of devotees. Only a few of the more intimate associates of the Lord could attend this particular kirtan. And it was always held in the evening at the house of Srivas. There was one Brahmin. He was a very young, simple, uh, austere Brahmin. And he liked to drink milk. In fact, that's how he lived. He lived only on drinking milk. He took no other forms of foodstuff. So he might say he was very austere. So he had heard that, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was performing his pastimes in the evening there, and he wanted to see. So he approached Srivas Thakur. Srivas Thakur said, whoa, this is not possible. The Lord does not allow anyone but his intimate associates in. But 
the Brahmin was very humble. So Srivas Thakur said something. He said, but I can see you're very austere, very humble. So you can come, but you have to hide because if the Lord finds out you're here, he will become very angry. So this Brahmin came and he hid in one place in the house so he could see. Now, Lord Chaitanya, he's the indwelling super soul in the hearts of all living entities. He knows exactly everything at all times. And whatever he wants to know, he'll, he can know. So when the uh, kirtan started, Lord Chaitanya started to dance. And then after a few moments, he stopped. And he called Srivas Thakur. Uh, Srivas, is there someone in this house who doesn't belong here? Well, since you asked, my dear Lord, we have invited this one Brahmana. Oh, and then the Brahmana heard and he came out and he fell at the feet of the Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya, and then he got up after offering obeisances. And uh, Srivas said, well, he's very austere. He lives only on milk. The Lord says, do you think you can attain, you know, devotion to Krishna simply by drinking milk? And he started to chastise him for his false austerities. And then the Brahmin was very humble, accepted whatever the Lord said, and decided to leave. Of course, the Lord asked him to leave, and he was in. While he was leaving, he was thinking, Boy, the Lord is so merciful. I did get to see some of his dancing, and he's so kind. When he was thinking like that, the Lord understood and called him back and welcomed him back, and he said, give up this idea of just, you know, your false austerity, engage in devotional service, and he welcomed him as one of his associates. So he actually became one of the associates, not direct, but associate of Lord Chaitanya. Like that. So this particular pastime illustrates that one cannot simply uh, attain Krishna simply through austerity. Austerity is a step towards bhakti, and if austerity does not lead to bhakti, then it simply leads to hard-heartedness or just a useless waste of time. Okay, so I'll stop there and... Uh, Thank you so much, Maharaj. <laughs> that was so wonderful, um, the sharing of the pastimes. Um, it does. It looks like everyone who was listening was just absorbed in the pastimes and don't have any questions at the moment. Um, but if anyone has any questions, you can go ahead and write them in the comments and maybe Maharaj will look back at the comments and um, try to answer them. So is there any last things you'd like to share, Maharaj? Is there any way that uh, people could follow you and your activities um, of the prison ministry or any of your preaching? Is there a way to uh, get in touch with that? Hmm. <laughs> well, I usually leave all this in the hands of some of my assistants, disciples who manage. I do have a, a Facebook page, which I don't usually see it all they do it <laughs> so, <laughs> so there i'm on facebook somewhere <laughs> um the iscon prison ministry programs um we um we have a website called holyjail.com and on there we post a lot of our activities in the prison ministry along with um, uh, my books. I have a second book that we also published called Forbidden Voices. That was the second one. Um, so that one is also about preaching in jail and it's more direct. It, 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 it pertains mostly to the inmates, their uh, lives, their writings, their artwork, poetry, realizations of Krishna consciousness. So that um, 
that's the second book. It's called Forbidden Voices, like that. Um, that's the two books we have. And then I have a third book that is um, just statements. It's more like sutras on Krishna consciousness. And that's called, uh, um, I forgot the name of it. <laughs> uh, the Nectar of... Nectar of daily drops, daily drops, it's called. Daily drops of nectar, that's it, yeah. daily drops of nectar. And uh, so these are the three books. Uh, we have a website, which is Chandramali Swami, not Chandramali Swami, cmswami.com, I think it is, yes, cmswami.com is a website like that. I usually don't get involved with all this, all the media. Everybody else does it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I think there's more, but I don't know all of it. <laughs> so. Well, we put a couple of those online for our viewers to um, to check out, but I will go ahead and get more of that information and put that in the comment section of this interview. This interview is also streamed on YouTube. Um, so many more devotees will come and watch it after this right now. So uh, with that, I just want to extend our um, deepest gratitude to, to you, Maharaj. We, we'd like to have you back on this channel and hear from you uh, more. And uh, we wish that you keep safe <laughs> during this, um, this, uh, this pandemic and that you continue preaching. And, and we look forward to um, hearing from you some more. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you for the opportunity. I feel very blessed to have the opportunity of your association and the opportunity to somehow or other try to speak a little bit about Lord Chaitanya. Hare Krishna. Thank you.